If you want to hunt private land but you're not sure what to do or you've tried and failed at getting permission to hunt somewhere, this video is for you. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my top five tips for things that I've learned from a few evenings of going out and getting permission while having decent success doing it. So my first tip is to go in the evenings. The ideal time is between 5.30 and 8 o'clock. Ideally, you would want to find the person outside after he's already eaten supper on a nice evening. People seem to be in better moods and more willing to talk on nicer evenings. So tip number one is go in the evenings especially on a weekday something else that you're really gonna have a hard time doing any of this without is a good hunting app with onyx hunt you can get a seven day free trial and i've made multiple different accounts with onyx and i've gotten a few seven day free trials unless you have a few spots specifically already picked out it's easy to just hop on onyx drop a few pins at places that you want to stop and you can see exactly where all the property lines are and you can see the landowner's name and it's nice when you meet them at the door if they're outside to go up and greet them by their first name. I think it makes them feel just a bit more comfortable if you greet them by their first name. So having a hunting map is huge. So tip number two is to keep permission slips in your vehicle. And that's for those times that you might be driving down the road and you're not in a time crunch and you see somebody outside at a really good looking property. That's when you can just swing in there, have a casual conversation with them and possibly get permission on. And what does it hurt to stop and ask? Because the worst thing that they can do is tell you no, and it's always a no unless you ask. So definitely doesn't hurt to stop and ask somewhere if you see him driving by or whatever. And that's why it's important to keep a permission slip inside of your vehicle. Tip number three is to dress properly. You don't wanna look overdressed, but you definitely don't wanna show up in a tank top and shorts. If you look too professional, it might seem like you're trying to sell something to them or something like that and they might automatically turn you away before they even hear what you have to say but if you look too casual they also might turn you away just by your looks so something like t-shirt and jeans should be fine for knocking on someone's door so the fourth tip i have is to not go alone take somebody with you take somebody younger with you whenever elmer goes to look for permission cody him and i all go together and in that case cody and i are the younger ones people just like to see younger people especially teens outside and being active, looking for places to hunt, people really seem to appreciate that. So the last time that we went out to look for places to hunt, we knocked on eight doors and got permission for three of them. And two out of the three people that said that we could hunt there had horses. So just keep that in mind. We've had really good luck with people that have had horses. I don't know, that could be complete coincidence, but the people that had horses said that we could hunt there. Something else that was super interesting that I noticed from the last time when we were there was that of those three places that we got permission to hunt, all three of those people were already outside. The other five were inside and they said no. That could just be coincidence, but I think that's very interesting that the three people that said we could hunt were already outside. People just seem to be more relaxed and more willing to engage if they're already outside. So my last tip is for getting a lot of permission efficiently, and that is to find a creek bottom or something that there's a bunch of houses along that have lots of property that go to the back. That way you can just go along and hit each of those houses that have a small section of woods. It's not gonna be big properties, but doing that can be very effective and just working your way down the houses. And that, and that way you can cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. And also the properties that you get permission for do not have to be big. Even if they're five, 10, 15 acres, they don't have to be 100 acres or a couple hundred acres. One of the last places that we got permission to hunt is only seven acres. And of those seven acres, there's only three acres of woods. But when you look at where it is on the map, it's right in the middle of a huge creek bottom system, and there's definitely gonna be some nice deer in that creek bottom system. That's it for this video right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you found this helpful. I've had a decent amount of success doing it this way. Some people like to say that you can't get permission to hunt anymore. I'm here to tell you, you definitely still can get permission to hunt. Just good old handshake permission. That's it for this video. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, you can do us a huge favor and hit the like button and subscribe. That really helps us out even more than you know. We plan to be putting out a lot of videos this fall. I was going back and watching some of our hunts from the, a couple years ago, and I definitely figured out some patterns, and we're definitely going to kill some nice deer this year. So if you don't want to miss those upcoming fall episodes in which we hopefully shoot some nice deer, you can go ahead and subscribe by clicking this circle right here, right there. If you want to see our playlist of all of our deer hunting videos, you can go ahead and click right here. So that's all for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. 